Make a date with Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Markwe at 6 a.m. from Monday to Saturday on Graphic Online via Facebook and YouTube as he expounds on matters of faith. Graphic Online, truth and accuracy every day. This is Reverend Dr. Ebenezer Marquis of Living Streams International, bringing you matters of faith with Graphic Online. Living Streams International, we meet at the Zoe Chapel of the Life Cathedral um, behind the Trade Fair, uh, behind Zenith College. We meet there on Sundays and for Sunday morning services and on Wednesdays for midweek services in the evening. And uh, we'd like to invite you to be part of us. But this morning, I'm continuing Dangerous Partnerships Part 3. We, we're taking a good look at Judges chapter 7, especially uh, verses 1 to 3. You know, uh, Judges chapter 6 tells the story of a man called Gideon and the hardships and the travail and the desire of his heart and how God comes to town and God says, I want to meet the need. He had an angelic visitation and not just an angelic visitation, he offered sacrifice even though he had not been asked, but it was free will and it was something that he did. And the angel of God did not just bless the sacrifice. But the Bible said he ascended in the flames of the sacrifice. Wow. You know, I mean, and this is somebody that God described. God called him a mighty man of valor, even though he was cowering in fear in the caves of the wine press. And he was cowering in fear. So I can get him drenched in, in, in the chaff of of. of of, of wheat. You get a threshing wheat at the wine press, doing the right thing at the wrong place. That was Gideon. He was covered with the chaff. God calls him a mighty man of valor. And Gideon had paid the price, the price for success, the price for prosperity. Because, you know, he told God that my family is the poorest in the whole of Israel, and I am the least. And God said, I am sending you to deal with the problem. You are going to be the salvation of your family. And so Gideon had broken down the altar. So at the altar that was in his father's house, the altar of Baal, and the and the and the, the, the grove that was by it, he had bent it all down. And so Gideon had done all the necessary spiritual things, the spiritual exercises that will promote success, the spiritual exercises that will promote goodwill. He had done all those things. He had desire, you get it, he had paid the price of the altar, I mean, uh, that is gone against uh, the norm. And the, th and the third one, he had offered sacrifice. Everything. He had prayed because he had questioned God, you get it, and said to God, are you sure you want to use me? Everything, all the ingredients for spiritual success was there. Then in Judges chapter 7, God dropped a bomb and said, Gideon, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to give you the victory. You are never going to win this warfare of life. You are never going to succeed. God succinctly said, I won't give you the victory. And the reason for not giving him the victory was because of association, because of the partnerships that he had. And this morning's one is dangerous partnership, part three. Now, God said to Gideon, deal with those who are fearful. And truthfully, those who are fearful, when God said, deal with them, they went. That is, those who don't believe in your, in your future, they went away. That, so the, the responsibility of discerning or the responsibility of finding out those who do not believe in you lies on you. Because God said, you Gideon, talk to them. So you become the mechanism by which you, you sever the, the, the cords of, of, of alliances with those people who do not believe in your future. Because they were afraid. That means they didn't have faith for the future. They didn't have faith in the vision. They didn't have faith in the long term. Their narrative in their mind, uh, the outcome of their narrative in their mind was failure. Then those people had gone. And then I got a little bit more confused because God came to town again and said to Gideon, the people are still too many. Then I said, Abba, God, what tells again? Those who are fearful are gone. Then God said, no, still, there are people that I do not want them around you. And for me, I was pretty much intrigued. And God said, okay, now this time, Gideon, you do not know the people. And it will be difficult for you to discern who they were. It will be difficult for you to see through who they really are. So you know what? I will do it for you. I will do something for you. I will prove who is with you. 
and who is not with you. And then God said to Gideon for dangerous partnerships part three, the second type of people who are going to be inimical to your progress, who are going to impede your progress to success and to the destiny is not just those who are fearful, but this type of people, sometimes it's difficult to see them. So God said to Gideon, if I leave it to you alone to fathom them out or to seek them out, you might not be able to see them. So God said, bring them to the waters and I will try them for you. Bring them to the waters and I will try them for you. And I was saying to myself, okay. So you know what God said? He said, adverse the trial, the test is going to give a revelation of who they are. So adversity has a way of revealing the inner thoughts of people, who people really are. Go through adversity and see who stands with you and who doesn't stand with you. You see, when it rains, then we see slippery places. So adversity has a way of exposing who your true partners are and those who are not your partners. And God said, bring them. I will try them for you. So there's going to be a trial. And in that trial, you're going to see who they really are. Now, guess what God said, how the trial was going to take place. He said, bring them to the waters. Bring them to the waters. And those who lap, those who lap like dogs, that is, bury their heads in the water and just drink, don't take them with you. But those who lap stooping and picking the water in their mouth, in their hands, and bringing it to their listening, they are the people. Go with them. Now, I am very confused over here. What God was saying is that those who lap like dog, those who drink like dog, those who bury their faces in the water, and, uh, and then I said, okay, wait a minute. What is going on over here? Water can be a mirror. Clear water is a mirror that you can look in and see whether the meat in your mouth, like the dog, is big or not. Waters can sometimes give you a reflection of yourself. So when God said those who lap like dogs, that means those who are obsessed with themselves. Listen, the reason why they are around you is because you are a platform. The reason why they are around you is because you are an opportunity. They have hidden agendas. They will take credit for the victory that you got. They will take responsibility for the victories that you win. They will steal the glory. They will steal your thunder. And God said to them, I don't need, they are fixated with themselves. So you'll be very surprised. There might be people around you who are selfish. And it takes revelation to see them. It takes inner revelation. God said, I'll show them to you by trying them. So there will be circumstances in, in life. The waterways of life, the waterway events of life is going to reveal who they are. When the storms are turbulent, see where they stand. When the storms are quiet, see where they stand. And the reason why they are with you is because they are obsessed with themselves. They are looking at the mirror of themselves. And that's why they are with you, ready to take the credit. And God said, you don't need them. Get rid of them. Many a pathway to progress has been impeded. Uh, many a climb up the ladder of success and prosperity, whatever, for companies, for ministries, for individuals, has been impeded by associations, by the kind of dangerous partners that we have. God said, I won't give you the, 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 the victory. And guess what? For some of those people, parting with them becomes very difficult. Parting with them because we have developed some soulish attachments to them. They look like people we can't do without. They are not afraid. They are not afraid. But guess what? Where you are going, they have hidden agendas that are self-promoting hidden agendas all around. They want to take the mickey out of the victory. They want to take the, the, the sting of the victory. They want to take credit for the victory. Dangerous partners. You don't need them. Adversity. Things would happen. And sometimes when things happen, these people part company with you. Guess what? It's not a loss. Stop grieving because God has just freed your wings from the entanglement. God has just freed you from the, from the weights that will cause the eagle's uh, uh, wings to droop instead of the eagle's wing flying. And sometimes God brings circumstances, adverse circumstances, that will reveal who they really are. When they go, don't cry after them and don't be worried. God will surely bring you the victory. He used trials to expose who needs to go with you. 
dangerous partnerships. May God deliver us all, especially you, more especially me. See you later.